Hey gamers, today we're going to look at Newton Great Discoveries and the expansion New Horizon. Let's check it out! So for the game, it's fairly simple. What you're going to do is take uh, these tiles, the number two coins, the little uh, potion tokens, and the number two victory points, and stack them in the pre-printed areas on the board there. Uh, you're going to shuffle through a bunch of these tiles. You're going to have extra. You're going to put them in the outlined areas there. Shuffle through a bunch of these tiles. You're going to have lots of extra too. And put them in the gold box areas there. Then you're going to shuffle through these tiles and put them out on this little uh, professor travel board over there. You're going to shuffle these little circle tiles and place them in any of the gold areas. Of course, skipping any areas that have a number of player counts. So for instance, in a... Uh, uh, a two-player game but would not put a token there. I'd simply just skip it. Uh, you're also going to be putting out these little banner. These are in-game cards. You're going to put these out across the board here where you see they're outlined and then one over there of course as well. Uh, don't forget to put some out on here on the track here at the top little work track as well. Speaking of which, you'll start with each player will start with a marker here on the work track here on the victory point counter. Uh, they're going to shuffle all these little column areas and put them where the columns are. Shuffle these little school areas and it's cut to show you where it goes. And then put them in the school. It doesn't matter where they go. You just mix up those uh, as well over there on the compass board there. That's the compass board. And uh, there's the compass. <laughs> and then uh, you're also going to be uh, giving them two students here, two students in the uh, area here. Everyone's going to get this quick, quick action tile. They're going to get cards of their color. Everyone has a color or shape as well. They'll start with two coins. They'll get four of these master classmen, master scholars or whatever. They'll put their cubes here, their book tiles here by their player color. And of course, this looks normal here, but you put the book tiles, divide them into stacks of three and put them from here. You'll be grabbing from the top bottom as you will cubes. You're going to shuffle through each one of these decks here, the one, two, and three scholar hats and deal out three cards each in those rows. If you're playing with the Great Discoveries card, you'll have them over here. You'll have a quick reference for uh, uh, these quick actions that you can do, like free actions you can do in the game, and then you are ready to play. Now, game's fairly simple. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be playing five cards from your hand. You start off with six here. You'll be playing five cards on the board and taking the action associated at the bottom of the corner here. So what do each one of these do? Well, when you play this one, let's say I was to play this one, while well, we get to move of this industry track one symbol. But because my special player board comes with a second one, I would get to move two. So I can move any of these guys two spaces. So I could go one, two. Now, if ever you pass over any of these gray tokens, you'll pick it up and take it with you. If you want to take the action, like let's say I started here maybe, and I wanted it to go two, I'd go one, two. I could take this one and I'd stop there. But if I had gone one, two, maybe, and ended there, I do not get to take that tile nor take the action. You have to land on that tile to take the action, but you still don't take the square tiles. The only ones you take off the board are these little free actions, and they can be victory points, co coins, a little bit of both. just depends on where you're at. Uh, same thing with the uh, scholar track there that I'll get to. But anyway, uh, you can go there, take the action. If you ha ever hit a dead end, if your student goes all the way and ends here, well, you see there's no other rows connecting here. That means he's locked right there. Same thing if a student were to go down this path and in there, he'd get locked and couldn't come back. You can. There is a way to bring extra students into the game. Uh, but uh, once they get hit a dead end, like maybe if they hit this guy hit this pennant, this guy hit this pennant, well, then you couldn't take that action anymore. Um, but that would be very impossible if that happened. Uh, anyway, that's the, that's the uh, study action. If you want to do a compass action here, of course you'll move as many spaces as you have compass areas on the board. So if I had other compass cards here, I'd move more than one. But here, he'll only move one space, either left, right, up, down. Now, if he lands on any one of these little areas like this, he'll take one of his cues on the top of his here and mark that he has been there before. Again, he has to stop his movement there. If he passes through that just to go to the next space, then he doesn't get to put a cube there. Only when he stops in these squares and these little other icons there can he place his cube. And as you see, as you place more cubes on your, off your board, you're going to get extra victory points as well. Now, there are certain areas on this board where you have to pay coin if you're going to travel through them, so you must also pay that coin if it becomes available. So for my next turn, if I played another compass, let's say, I'd get an action of two. I could go one, two, I'd put a, another uh, cube there, take that action, which is two free potions, but I'd also have to pay two coin because I traveled on down both these roads, but I could not put a cube there because I did not stop on the number five building. 
All right, so that's kind of how the compass action works. The work action controls this top marker here, and you can move as many spaces as you have these icons on this board. So right now I had one, but later on, let's say I play the second card on another turn, then I'd have an action of two. Now what you're moving is you're moving down this money track, and as you go along it, you're collecting money as you go around. Now here, you can pass through it and just get the money, or you can just stop your movement and take the action on it. Everything else you'll automatically get when you pass it by, you'll get those coin. But again, if I wanted to go here, I could take the action, or maybe just pass it by if I just wanted more money or wanted to move down this track. If ever you have these little icons where you see the little diploma areas here, they're all over the boards there, uh, it will allow you to play one of these diploma cards and or master cards there, and they just do different things in the game and the rule book will tell you what they, each one of them does. So that is the work action. Now let me get to another one here. How do I get these cards? Well, I can take this little hat action. And again, as many hats as I have determine which type of deck I can take some from. So if I just had one hat, that means I can only take from this deck here, and I could pick from any one of these that I wanted. Okay. Uh, again, if I were to uh, uh, have two hats here, that means I could take one from the second row or the first row, whatever I wanted. Of course, I have three hat emblems on my board. I would be able to take one from any one of these and place in my hand. Finally, there is the book action. The book action is very important. For as many books as you have on your board, you can put one in the one book area, the two book area, or the three book area. And you have to meet the qualifications. So let me bring another player board up to kind of show you this. So for this, I would have to have a blue, or put one here, I'd have to have a green book. Well, as you see, I have a green book here right now. So I couldn't do the blue action, but I could do the green one. So maybe for that one book, I place one, take the top one here from this stack, do one top down, and place it over the, well, that was green there, so I'd place it over the green there like that. Now, if ever you were to finish a row vertically or horizontally, you're going to score the victory points. So let's say later on that I scored these two bookshelves too. Well, now at the end of every round, as we, as we finish our turns and gather up our cards, I'm going to get two victory points. And later on, maybe if I filled this top row up, I'd get six victory points every round. So you can really get some victory points by completing areas on your bookshelf. Other things you can cover up are these little icon areas. It, it, these uh, show places on the board where you have been, where your professor has traveled, but you have to have a cube showing there in order to cover it up. There are a couple of quick actions here that can help you out in the game. For this one, it says, hey, pay one coin and look, deal out two more cards from any of these rows to look at them. So maybe you don't want any of these, pay, pay a coin and deal out two more, see if you want one of those. If you ever want to strengthen one of these actions, like, man, I wish I had two books but I only have one. Well, pay two coin and you can add a plus one onto that book action and so make it a two action. Or pay three coin to get a potion. Now what can potions do? Potions can basically substitute any t type of book. So for example, I wanted this double book action, but I only have one green. Well, if I had a potion, I could pay that potion to pretend to be a green so I could cover that item up. Now, what if I wanted to uncover thi or cover this up? That's building number three, and I'm a long way away from there, and I may not cover it. Well, for three potions, I can cover any of these building areas on my board, so I could pay three potions and cover it like that. Uh, when I'm taking the book action, of course. So those are some of the quick actions. These are free actions you can do as long as you have the resources. Remember, three coins buys you a potion. And then again, five coin here, you can pay to have one of your students come off your board and start on the learning track. Of course, you'll do that up to two times there. And so those are the quick actions you can do in the game. Uh, the last action here is the joker action. The joker, when you play it, of course, my board is full, so let's say I had an extra space available. The joker can count for any one of these symbols. So maybe I want the mechanic symbol. That's one, two, and the joker would be three. The only thing to keep in mind is if I had done that earlier and then I played this book action, does the joker count as a book action too? No. Joker only counts as that one item during that round. After that, it's kind of null and void. Now, at the end of the turn, when everyone has taken five turns here, they're going to choose one of these cards, and they're going to tuck it underneath their player board like so. And that way it gives them another permanent icon that they're going to have in the game. And then they're going to gather up all their other cards and keep them in their hand. So for example, maybe next time if I play this one, I'd have that action times two. And it's going to strengthen an action as you're tucking each card after each round. Because obviously this is going, well, this is one, two, three, four, five. You'll go six rounds having uh, multiple actions to take. 
And of course, you're playing cards from your hand. You're either doing the actions on the board. Again, the rule book explains you what all the cards do, but the iconography is very simple here. And at the end of every round, you're tucking another card in there. The game ends after six rounds. Oh, by the way, I should mention this is the first player. You'll pass this around at the end of every round. Of course, score any bookshelf points you have, gather up your cards, and play them again. At the end of six rounds, then you're going to add up any in-game victory points that you have here, any of these students that have reached these banners. To reach some of these banners, though, you must have those books on your bookshelf currently in order to move into that space. Once you're there, then you can score uh, those victory points. And, of course, whoever has the most victory points wins. Now, I should mention there are some promo cards you can get from Master Classmen. Uh, this Great Discoveries here is another quick action you can do in the game. Basically, you pay the coinage. You get the permanent action, which is listed here. So I would always get a potion, and I'd always have like an orange book in my library. And then, any time I can cash in and get victory points for any of these conditions. And the rule book will tell you what each one of these Great Discoveries do. Again, that's a, that's a quick action, something you can do for free. Another expansion they have is the New Horizons board. With the New Horizons board, there are new spaces here. First off, you see the uh, times two areas here. What it takes is you need five books in your library in order to place there. But once you do, it, whatever the pennant is there, it will count toward double the amount of points. So big reward if you can reach the qualifications on either one of those. Also, uh, these little actions here, whenever you take these specific actions that printed here on the board, it will also give you a victory point. Again, you must have a student there in order to gain those victory points. So that's pretty cool. That's the New Discoveries or New Horizons expansion. Final thoughts, what do you think about the game? I have always been looking at this game for like well over a year. Got it in one of my big trades I made and I don't regret it. This is a good one. Uh, my gaming group absolutely loves this game. Uh, I like that the player boards are different because you're going to be focusing on that extra bonus action. What can I do with that? There are several paths to victory, and that's what I love because there are several ways to accomplish the same type of thing. And there, you can grab more cars and mitigate your luck there. Uh, you need to focus on that bookshelf. That's going to get you some big victory points. But to clear some of those bookshelves, you've got to get the cards. You've got to travel your professor around. You want to uh, travel your students around because there's tons of good bonuses on that board. And, of course, the in-game bonuses could be big. Uh, you also want to move up the money track, and that's the one thing that killed me because money is super tight. Super tight in this game. So I, I had to be working more because I was, I was running out of money really quick. Uh, there's so many great aspects to this game that's relatively simple to play, but has many, many, many impactful decisions on it. Um, what about Great Discoveries? It's okay. I like it. I don't think you need it. You don't need it for the game, but to have those permanent actions are really nice. To have the option, because the more coin you pay, the better the action is going to be. And to have that extra score that you can do, that's just some bonus scoring that you can take advantage of when you need it. That one's fine, yeah, but give or take. The promo cards, I have them. Some of my friends thought they were funny. One was, uh, I can't remember his name, Stephen Hawking, I think. But uh, not, not necessary to track down. Uh, board Game Geek Store has them if you want them. And then finally, the New Horizons board. I played with it once, and yes. <laughs> I love that board. I love having workers on the action where you get victory points when you take that action. Because it, it changes the game and encourages you to get that. Now, everyone tried for those, uh, five, have five books on your shelf to get into that area that scores double the points. I mean, that's huge, but that is so hard. To, I don't know if anyone ever got to it, but people really were trying to get to that area because it's worth a lot more. It's worth double the points. Uh, so I, I, I just love this game. A lot of different, uh, like I said, I love, I love a game where there's a common goal, but several different paths to victory. And don't forget those quick actions. Do not forget those. I forgot those quick actions so many times because I would have spent two coin in a heartbeat to update one of my book actions or cog actions to move further or do something else in the game. Uh, I love those quick actions too. Those are great. So overall, Newton, that's a keeper. All right, gamers, that's it for now. Until next time, game on!